What we're going to be discussing is alternative data, which is a fascinating topic. Um, that's really a way to generate alpha, not only for hedge fund managers, but also for uh, private equity and um, corporations. Let's talk about uh, how do you invest to use app data like yours, and uh, how is it changing? How is it changing from, let's say, you know, three, four years ago? Yeah, th thank you very much, Vidak, and uh, thank you for having me here. Um, so when I'm talking about app data, I mean mobile apps, so what's on your phone? And the way that I like to think about it is that when you open an app, you are basically a customer of that company, whoever's app that is. So mobile app data really is tracking customer activity. And so what we've seen is that when um, companies started to go public that were mainly driven by user growth, so like think about Facebook, it's the most obvious example, uh, investors, public company investors wanted our data to track user growth. And that, um, that use case lasted for a number of years. But so many companies and their apps now are mature. Finding new growth is hard. And so what people want to know now is how are people interacting with these apps? How much time are they spending? Is that changing? Are new users behaving the same way as older users? And what we found is that our base data set, which is around since 2016, no longer answers those questions. We needed to come up with new versions of mobile data in order to address the questions that investors really want to know. So now what we're seeing is how deep can we get as opposed to how broad can we get? And the more that we do that, we find that um, you mentioned due diligence. Mm -hmm. Private company investors wanting to do due diligence on an uh, investment can now use our data to get a really deep understanding of what are customers for this company actually doing and how they behaved over the past couple of years. So as we continue to think about investor use cases, what they want to do, what we're finding is that the deeper that we go into actual customer behavior, for example, following the customer journey from opening the app to making a purchase, those are the kinds of things investors really want to know, and that's where mobile app data is going. Thanks, Tom. Uh, what is Autopia doing to meet investor investors' needs? Uh, that's a, a great question, and it ties back a lot into what Joseph was saying about changes in uh, regulation. So what we've seen is that the number of mobile user panels in the U.S. has more than halved over the past two years without this new uh, Consumer Protection Bureau uh, regulation that Joseph mentioned coming through. Getting this data on what customers are actually doing from a mobile perspective is getting harder and harder. And in a way, in a sense, that actually plays into our hands in that we don't have an existing mobile user panel that we've done through some sort of less than uh, up and up means. We are looking to build one the right way. And so, as I mentioned before, our customers want to know more and more deeply what exactly app customers are doing. And by building a user panel the right way, which it's very clear that you are opting in, that you are receiving some sort of compensation for what you are doing, whether it's you're getting a coupon, whether it's a direct payment, whether it's some sort of additional access, if you're giving something that a user wants and they're willing to share their information with you, that then creates a really stable, high-quality panel. Getting back to what investors want, investors want to know, are people under the age of 18 spending more or less time on Roblox this month than they did the same month a year prior? For that kind of information, we're pretty good right now. But to really answer that question, we are investing more and more time and energy into building out that specific user panel in the proper regulatory fashion. <laughs> Can I, can I add to that one? Please, please go ahead. Because that's, that's a great point, Tom. And I think that's the trajectory we're on, where consumers, as consumers, we're providing, we're allowing information about us to be used. And what we don't like is when we're not told how it's being used and we're not given the option to opt out. Um, however, if you're offered incentives to use it, I think many of us, not everybody, there's a group of people who are committed to privacy and anonymity and they'll always opt out. But most of us, we're, we're a lot of us, are, enough of us are comfortable uh, as long as it's transparent and controllable and where we're compensated, that we're happy to exchange uh, some of our personal information in return for something we see as value. And I'll give you an example that happens all the time today, which is with this shopping. Uh, supermarkets now have a pretty robust business where if you opt into their price club, you're actually agreeing to share data about your purchasing habits, 
but in return, your tide is $2 off or, and things like that. And so um, that idea of compensating in some capacity uh, consumers for releasing their information is one that's going to take hold. And I think as investors, what we want to know is if the data sources we're acquiring have that clear uh, opt-in and stability with their, the information that they um, acquire. What you want to avoid is investing in a company that appears to have a lot of valuable data assets that are based upon sketchy means. And I do know of a story of a major card company that acquired a, uh, another company, and uh, they, uh, they discovered that the data was being obtained through you know, not the most uh, uh, integrity-driven approach. And so therefore, they put a, a, a halt on all data collection at that subsidiary. And the value and the risk, the value of their investment decreased, as well as it created risk for their brand, which was worth, you know, multiples of the of the acquired company. So you need to take care of consumers who are providing data, compensate them fairly in order to build a stable source of alternative data. And then as an investors and as corporations acquiring company, you want to make sure the partners you're working with, you know, really have that stable uh, data supply.